Welcome to finding your cutie mark. Woo! How many of you have found your cutie mark? Okay, we have like a handful that have found their cutie mark. How many are finding your cutie mark? All right, well, thank you for coming, and I really hope that this gives you some ideas about what it's like to find your cutie mark, and also ways that you can inspire yourself to find what you're good at. So first off, I'm in, I'm the incredible brass knuckles. For those of you, that, <laughs> for those of you that don't know me, yeah, it's nice to meet you all. Thank you for coming out to my panel, and I've been presenting all kinds of different panels. This is one of my newer ones. It's really more of a journey. I did the amazing iron whale, talking about how you can be strong and assertive, and and that means something to me. But more than that, being assertive taught me that it's part of myself. And so I want to help you now to find who you are. So to do that, we're going to have some fun. First off, we're going to talk about what is a cutie mark. So we're going to have an interactive panel. I want to hear from you. What do you think a cutie mark is? Raise your hands, anyone? OK, in the red. A personal choice of what you want to pursue. A personal choice of what you want to pursue. Thank you. What do you all think? Yeah? OK. your destiny and what you want to do. Great, thank you. Way in the back. I think it is connected to uh, what you may call genetic or tiny heritage, but it can also be uh, changed by uh, own choices. So, for example, in Apple family, something has to be related to Apple, but as you can see, uh, you can much say there's all that Okay. So that's a part of like the magic uh, net that existed uh, on the user. Okay, so what you're saying is part of it's genetics and part of it is the way that you're brought up and what you like and how you go about your life. I think it's like more deeper than that. Okay. Uh, but that goes into science fiction theory in my response. So hey, uh, <laughs> that's what we do here. Okay, thank you for sharing. Yes. The balance between your dreams and realities. Yeah, absolutely. Good one. Over there? Okay, the literal symbol that represents gifts that you can share. That's great. Thank you. And in the back. A symbol that you're on the right path for your life. I like that. All right, you guys had great ideas already. So why are you even here if you know what a cutie mark is? Ah, uh, uh, yes! <laughs> They're just here to see the incredible brass knuckles. What did I tell you guys? Come on. Wait, wait, let me come out here. Designs. I've got these amazing business cards that are like candy. Um, what you do is you take this packet and you slide it out. So I'm going to pass some of these around and you can get yourself, uh, it's not a real bubble gum, but you can get a bubble gum business card if we want to pass those around. One of you volunteer for me. Kind of just spread them out again. Oh, my favorite volunteer. Thank you so much. Please follow me. I, I do assertiveness panels. I go to different conventions. Some of them are more for anime, furry, video games. So it's really just all about everyone, whatever you like, I'm there. So if we know what a cutie mark is defined as, what I'm saying is find a cutie mark. There's a difference between getting a cutie mark which is what ponies do, and finding a cutie mark, which is what happened to Gabby. Anyone can, any creature can find a cutie mark, which is definitely part of your destiny, your own personal self, and what you love. And there has to be a balance with the real world and your job and what you can do for a living. And sometimes they work really well together and sometimes you're like, what am I doing, right? So never get frustrated. Remember the cutie mark crusaders are here to help us. 
So before we get into how to find a cutie mark, we're gonna go through some rules. Because this is a discussion, I want all of you in here to agree to these rules, and I will definitely open it up for more if you think there's anything else you'd like. So first off, I am not a professional, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not trained to help people, I'm just doing this out of the greatness of my heart and based on what I personally learned. If there are issues that you need to talk to someone about, please find a counselor, find uh, someone that you trust, whether it's professional or maybe from your church or your school, your doctor, it's not anything to be ashamed of, all right? Number two, very important, take turns. We're all, we all have a story to tell, and I think that's fantastic, and I'd like to hear some of your stories if you're willing to share. If you're not willing to share, that's fine. One of my things in the Iron Will skit I did is that I said, okay, I'm gonna call on that volunteer way in the back, and you better come down here, because that's what Iron Will did with Fluttershy, right? He called her out in the crowd, and she's like, oh! And she still had to come on stage. And I think in a way that does get people to kind of get over their fear when you force it on them, but this one I'm just gonna let you volunteer, all right? There are no bad ideas. What works for some creature may not work for anyone else, so remember that there's different ideas, but none of them are bad. And of course, we're here because we love ponies and we wanna have friends. So whatever is said, Please don't be mean-spirited. Remember, if, we're, if we laugh at something you said, maybe it was a little embarrassing. Remember, it's okay. We're not laughing at you. We're laughing because we understand where you've been. And there's a lot of people that have gone through a lot of things, and you don't know that. So definitely understand that we're all here because we want to have friends. We want to do things together. Now you can see the slides better. If you want good pictures, go to this screen. Also, because there's no teasing, I don't want any bullying either. Okay, good, my first corny joke. <laughs> and yeah, there's gonna be questions. So with that, is there any other ground rules that you want to have? From last year's panel, the first rule that an audience member said was, don't call creatures without cutie marks blank blanks. It's derogatory, right? It's mean. Some people don't like that term, so that was a rule. So try not to use blank blanks if you can. Say ponies without cutie marks or people that are still looking, okay? Other rules, anything? You're a great audience, thanks for coming. <laughs> Let's get into the meat and potatoes here. So how did these three get their cutie marks? We kind of mentioned a little bit of it earlier. Anyone? By ruling out literally everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're actually gonna get into that. He said by ruling out almost everything else, yes. They went through a journey of friendship. They went through a journey of friendship. An amazing one, a musical episode where they actually said, you know what? We don't need to do anything else. Why don't we just focus on finding other ponies' cutie marks and we'll get our cutie marks whenever. And then what happened? They have their cutie mark. <laughs> Sometimes the best things happen when you start trying too hard. Yeah. So what did, what did this gentleman over here mention? When in doubt, chart it, it out. So who remembers Iron Will? Yeah. With his corny catchphrases like, don't be sorry, be assertive. Okay, when in doubt, chart it out. Good. So this is what the Kitty Mark Crusaders did. Lots of things. What were some of the things that they did? Zip lining. Yeah. Zip lining, yeah. Yeah, play. Skydiving, horseshoe throwing. Was there one over here? Pet sitting. What was that? Pet sitting. Oh, pet sitting. Yeah. Bowling. Ooh, bowling yeah. yeah, bowling. Everybody loves bowling. Yeah. In the back? They did snorkeling. They did snorkeling. Yes, in the green? They tried to help every pony. Every single t pony in town one day. Over here, I saw your hand, yeah. Square dancing, okay. Baking. Baking, yeah. And the blue. Yes, zip lining. So they did some crazy stuff and some like, you know, tame stuff. Cause I mean, what was that pony that was painting circles? She didn't get her cutie mark in painting circles, but you gotta try it. So why does charting it out work? 
We saw this in another episode more recently. Hopefully you've all seen it. If not, watch it. Surf and or turf. So what happened in this one was they went to Sequestria in Harmonizing Heights for, who was it? Terramar. So he was one of the hippogriffs that could live in the land and in the sea. And he didn't know which he liked better. And he said he thought he had to choose where he wanted to live. So they decided, when in doubt, make a list. Try to see the benefits of one versus another, and then start crossing them out. So if you like something, cool, keep doing it. If you find that it's not for you, or you don't have time, or you don't have money, Put that as a side list, things that you would like to do if you had more time or money, or maybe you can find a friend that can help you do things that you can't do by yourself. When lots of people pool money together, you can buy fancy equipment. Yeah, so <laughs> make friends. And if you haven't made friends at this convention yet, I highly encourage it. Just say hi. Introduce yourself. Talk about costumes or shirts, a character that you love. And then ask them, is it okay if I hang out with you? Maybe they're busy, maybe they're not. Is it okay if I get your contact information on, online? I mean, I, I did that with some people. I was like, wait, I'm not following you yet? So it's fine to ask. Just ask. And I know that can be really, really hard, but you need to have the courage to do that. At one point in my life, I would be like terrified in the bathroom. Like, I can't go out there. I can't go out there. I, I can't do it. But you have to turn it around and say, if you don't try, you're never going to succeed, okay? So what do they do after that? They're like, oh, okay, we're gonna check off different things. We're gonna see, is this gonna work for us? And finally, they realize that both are good. A cutie mark does not have to be a single talent. Is there any pony in the show you know that has multiple things on their cutie mark? Uh, did I hear the cutie mark crusaders? <laughs> How many things are on their cutie mark? Yeah? Uh, there's, two. there's the shield. The shield? And then there's a little symbol inside the shield. There's a symbol inside the shield, and there's actually a symbol inside the symbol. There are three symbols on each of the cutie marks. Yeah. Because the apple, and then the music note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they have three things. And one of those is unifying the three together. So you don't have to just have a cutie mark in one thing. If you like multiple things, go for it. Now, the crazy, crazy deep, what is a cutie mark question? So we went over what you think, and I'll tell you right now, you are right. But what does it take to find your cutie mark? I have an incredible acronym for you. Are you ready? <laughs> Do you know what it's gonna be? Oh, you guys. <laughs> It starts with a C. Yeah. When you want to find your cutie mark, you need to commit. And one of the phrases Brass Knuckles says is, don't quit, commit. Yes. We're coming back to that later. You need to understand what you're doing. So you need to say, I am going to do this. I'm going to try these projects. I've got my list. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do it. The first and hardest part is that first step. And then you have to understand it's going to take time. There's going to be trial and error. How many seasons did it take for the Cutie Mark Crusaders to get their cutie marks? About. Season five. <laughs> and now it seems like it was so long ago, right? It's crazy. The next is, you said it, time. Finding your cutie mark will take time. Some may get it immediately. I don't know of any little teeny ponies that have their cutie marks, but I guess it's possible if they were like cutie mark and giggling. <laughs> Brother way, <laughs> yeah. This one, infinite patience. It will be frustrating. You may give up for a while, walk away from it, that's fine, but go back. Don't give up. Don't quit. Come on, guys, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit, commit. <laughs> commit. And finally, effort. You have to put work into this. How many people here have learned a foreign language? Wow, good for you guys. How many of you have tried learning a foreign language? Yeah. There we go. Why is that? S schools are not good. It's a lot of hard work. You need to practice it. You need commitment, understanding, time, infinite patience, effort, 
and other people to practice with. Yeah, it's difficult. I learned Spanish in school and I spent 10 years learning it. Okay, I thought it was easy. I thought language was easy. Now I'm trying to learn Japanese. <laughs> I have given up, given up, learning Japanese twice over 10 years. But I actually, I paid a few hundred dollars for a class and I went to the class for 10 weeks straight. I forced myself, I said, I'm gonna put this money down. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give it the time. I'm gonna try doing the effort. And it was still hard. And so now I'm kind of in a little hiatus and I'm saying, I gotta get back to it. I gotta keep practicing. Because if you don't practice every day, you can forget things. So you have to, you have to do that. And so I'm still trying to learn and I'm still failing, but I don't give up. I still want to, and I still will. There's a long time ahead for me and there's an even longer time ahead for you. So you have to realize that this is a long journey and it needs all of these, which spells out the acronym cutie. cutie. So you need to use the cutie method. Well, you don't need to, but I recommend at least starting here to find your cutie mark. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions so far? We're gonna go into some examples after this, yes. How do you undertake this for multiple pursuits? Yeah, you gotta pick one and start, or maybe two or five, however many you personally can handle, and that's your self journey. You have to say, what is it I like? Make the list, and then rank the list. Say, what is it you like the most? What is it that you can do right now? What are you physically able to do based on your time, money, family, and, and just try things, and it takes time. I've done so many different things since I was in college. I did art with markers, because I'm, I'm very artistic. I've done sewing, both hand sewing and sewing machines. I've gotten into digital pictures once I could afford to get a tablet. Mm -hmm. I've done a whole bunch of different things and conventions first in attending, and then I decided to do panels, which are kind of scary at first. But now I'm doing these panels and I'm having fun, and I hope you're having fun too. But, <laughs> thank you. All of these things are incremental and they grow on each other. So sometimes you have to break it down into smaller parts. And that really, if you think about it, like I can't just say I'm gonna do a panel tomorrow. I needed to practice speaking, have friends, go over, find out what I was gonna talk about, research, and then start putting things together, give it in front of my friends before I do the real thing. <laughs> I'm talking because these guys like to do test runs of their panels too. Yep. Okay. so many little pieces so try to think about every part and if you can't think of it ask a friend ask a mentor ask your parents what how do I get from A to Z because you need to go through most of the alphabet to get to the end does that help it's a start we'll keep going through the slides and let me know if you have a specific question all right so I mentioned something before don't quit Come in. okay you guys are getting it one thing that I'm going to do is a little bit of crossover into other things because Bernie Khan has opened up to other cartoons. So one of the, my favorite quotes, my favorite songs from animation is from Zootopia. Try everything. This song is amazing and it's really about the fact that you fall down and then you keep trying. You don't just stop. You get up and you try it again and you just don't give up and you keep believing in yourself and someday things will start to fall into place. Maybe not tomorrow, again, infinite patience. But just try things. So the first example we're gonna go through is a video. Start with the end in mind. This is amazing, and I think you all are starting to figure out what the scene is. <laughs> let's just play it. I can't, I, I can't not, let's do it. Turn into a teacup. No! Teacup! No! Teacup! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, Starlight! I can't put a trick that's not working into my act. How come it's not working? It could be because you're just yelling, Teacup! and not picturing it in your mind. Oh, yeah, that could be it. <laughs> what does your teacup look like? What shape is it? What color? <gasps> Teacup! 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 
You know what you need? A teacup. <laughs> I pictured a teacup poodle. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I know, right? So, <laughs> so what is it that Trixie needed in order to make the teacup? A visualization. Start with the end in mind. This is part of the seven habits of highly effective people. It's kind of a difficult one to write down, but it's very, very, very popular in the professional human world. And one of those steps is start with the end in mind. Think about where you want to be. You can't get there if you don't know. Think about what kind of teacup you want. Think about what kind of cutie mark you want. And you can, in this world, sometimes think about what you want and work towards it. You may or may not get it immediately, but just keep working at it. Think about what you want and get there through practice and trial and continue on. So really quickly, I wanna go over how some others visualized and got to their goals. First, we got Rainbow Dash. Originally, when she was really, really young, she got trophies. What were those for? Was it for being the best in the back? Yeah, yeah. Participation, thank you. Rainbow Dash did not win. She participated. She practiced flying. She didn't win. She wanted to be the fastest, right? But did she get there? Not, not at first. So how did she get from her dream of being on the Wonder Volts to actually being a Wonder Volt? This has happened, guys. Did you realize she got her dream? Yeah. How did she get there? Commitment, steps, yeah. patience, yeah. infinite effort, having the end in mind, not giving up, friendship. And if you rewatch the series, I know this will take a long time, but if you ever do, <laughs> look at that growth. She went from having an idol to being an idol, to being a mentor to Scootaloo. And she's gotten pretty good at it now, right? There were some rocky steps, but she's... <laughs> and you know, she was doing that coaching thing when the Cutie Mark Crusaders were having their camp. Yeah, so she has gone from being the student to being the mentor, and that's really all you can hope for. It's amazing. So what happened with Rarity? She always loved fashion. Even before she got her cutie mark, she was making costumes for plays. And then what happened when she found this stone? A rock? A rock? <laughs> yeah, was her destiny a rock? It was the beautiful gems inside. And I think that's kind of a metaphor for the way that everyone is beautiful, right? On the inside, that whole corny thing. Guess what, I'm really, I do a lot of corny quotes and this is one of them, okay? You're all beautiful on the inside, you're all worth it. You all have something that you need to share with others and that's what your PD mark is about for me. So one thing I'm gonna say right now while I've got you all here is because I love corny motivational quotes, I do corny motivational quote email. If you're interested in signing up, yes, this is a plug, I take your name or nickname, email, and your state, and I send out monthly emails that go over ways to think about how to, uh, what's called introspection, thinking about yourself, your own talents, trying something different. So this month, um, actually this year, I'm doing a 12 month challenge. And I know it's halfway through the year, but guess what? It's never too late to start. So we'll pass these around. Thank you again. Your data is safe. I won't share it with anyone else. It's literally just if you want corny emails from me. And if you don't, you can always cancel. But if you're interested, please, I would love to share what I do with you every month. So with that, our next pony is Applejack. She has always been part of the Apple family, right? But when she was looking for her cutie mark, where did she go? Yeah. To Maine, Hatton. She got away, she thought this was, she had to try something else, she was sick of it all. And then what did she realize? She still loved it, yeah. And her talent isn't necessarily just being a farmer, is it? She teaches others about honesty, and really it's about team, build, team building for her. So in the school, what does she do? 
She works with groups of students and teaches them about the lessons that she learned. Again, she's gone from questioning why she was at home to supporting the family to now going out and showing others the values of hard work, honesty, and family. And our favorite, Fluttershy. She's always been shy. She never really was one of those flyers. Once she learned about creatures, she started to love them. And so we'll get to her example in just a little bit. Pinkie Pie, did she have parties before she got her cutie mark? What about those housewarming eves with the family? Okay, maybe they were lower key. Maybe they didn't have all the confetti balloons and things, but she's still... Party's a party. A party is a party. What about the celebrations around Holden Folder? It's an annual tradition, guys. <laughs> she loved it. She loved it. So you don't, it's, it can be something you're already doing that you want to share with others. And finally, Twilight Princess. Wait, sh she doesn't have wings in this picture, guys. You, you remember that, right? Yeah, she started as a nerdy student that didn't know how to talk to people, and now she's the princess of friendship, and she runs a school on friendship. When did this happen? Oh, over eight seasons, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Think about yourself. Would you have imagined five years ago that you would be at a brony convention right now? Five years ago, no. Some of you, yeah. A lot of you, no. Every pony changes. And change is always going to happen no matter what. You won't be able to predict it all the time, but if you use what you like to guide you, you can go in a certain direction. Obviously, you all like my little pony, so yeah. <laughs> Use that to help with your cutie mark as well. What do you like? And if something changes in your life, whether it's good or bad, sometimes you have to go with it. I've had some changes in jobs, and I have always looked at them in a positive light. There's always something good that can come out of it. Sometimes positivity helps too. So thinking about, okay, this is a bad situation, and sometimes there's really bad situations, like, like on the streets bad, like bad illness bad. And sometimes it's going to be bad, but at some point you need to keep moving on. And so that's really what it's all about, is to say, okay, what can I do to make myself happy? What is it that I enjoy? And again, that's going to tie back to those things that would be your cutie mark. What is it that can always make you smile? What is it that you can distract yourself with, like video games? You got cutie marks with video games, I'm serious. Think about what you love. And always practice. Practice? So this quote, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times by Bruce Lee. Practice. If there's something you like, you may get frustrated. You may have to keep going. Don't say that you can't. Always keep trying. So when we think about cutie marks, we're talking about talents, family, friends, skills. Practice. But why sometimes don't we find them? For those of you that can't read this, there's a schedule and it says sleep, work, and food. Okay? Most of us should be doing those three things. And this one's like, where, where does video games fit into my schedule? And then he takes the video games and tries to, oh, can I replace sleep with video games? Yeah, we're all laughing because we know that happens. Sleep, homework, family, yeah. These are the kind of things that distract us. And why is that? It's the same things that actually you need to find your cutie mark. Time. Who says, I don't have enough time? You have all the time in the world. What do you do with your time? My first challenge in my newsletter that's going around in January was why do you say if I had enough time, is it important enough for you to take an extra five minutes every day and do that thing that you love? It should be. And I'm not going to blame any of you because I do it too. But I made it my goal to start playing video games again. This sounds silly, but there was like eight years when I didn't play any video games and I call myself a gamer. I was, I was in shame. And so I started to play video games. I mean, not a lot. And there are weeks when I still don't but I made it a priority to say, you know what, I'm gonna take some time for myself. I also made it a commitment to send out those newsletters, so guess what I do twice a month? 
take the time to sit down, think about my own skills, think about my life. And really that's been my goal this, this year is to spend time thinking about myself. So you have to make time. It's hard. Maybe you stay up a few minutes late. You can take a little bit out of sleep, but don't take a lot. <laughs> Maybe if you wanted to read more books and you're in a commute all the time, you get audiobooks. Maybe once a month you go to a club or a meetup that does the thing that you enjoy. Find just one little way to do something that makes you happy, okay? Another one? Priorities. So if in doubt, chart it out, right? Make a list. Sometimes you don't put them in the right order. Sometimes those things that you have to do have to go first and it really just takes all the time and you have to do them. Please don't not do things you have to do. Pay the bills, eat, drink, take your meds. But sometimes there are things that you waste time with like, oh, I gotta take out the trash. So, oh, wait, you know what, I had to go and do that other thing and, and then all of a sudden you're off in a, in a whole different place. Procrastination is it's pretty easy. And also excuses. If I only had time is one of the excuses, but there are many others. No excuses, if you can help it. Don't blame others, but don't blame yourself either. Accept what happens and then move on. And also fear. Fear of the unknown, that's common. Fear of change, that's very common. Something different in your routine very difficult to change. But sometimes you need to have that courage to try new things, to get out there, to meet people, to say, you know what, I, I'd like to do this. So what is your cutie mark? What is it gonna be? I'm actually gonna skip through this, and if you have questions on that, we can talk later, but I wanna make sure to get to the good stuff. Deadlines are very important. How do you make a deadline? <laughs> so this is Get Smart. So when you make goals, which kind of goes to the question you had. You want a specific goal. So something really small. So I want to make this panel. I need it by BronyCon. Okay, measurable. Ooh, that measurable is the date, right? So I need it by the end of July. Achievable, can I make a panel? Oh yeah. Realistic? Well, as long as I don't wait until the last minute. You know what BronyCon did this year to make it even better for me? They made us submit our slides beforehand. I'm looking at the folks in the back. Let's get a round of applause for our support. Yeah. They made us submit our slides. And I was like, I need to submit our slides at least a week before the convention. I'm sure they would have liked to have them a month before the convention, but who has time for that? So deadlines are often the best way to get things done and set them yourselves. And if you miss a deadline, it's okay. You can forgive yourself as long as you're not, you know, paying late fees and stuff like that. And even then, do what you can as soon as you can. And that's the time-based part, right? So when you set goals, make them SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. This is an actual thing, you'll hear it in real jobs. Yeah. Everyone's like, <laughs> do you practice SMART? Eh. Try, try, yeah. Take a picture of it if you want. And you can find it online. There's actually a lot of good websites that talk more in depth about setting SMART goals. But all I'm gonna say is how I've used it online. And then I think we're gonna be going into questions. Anyone, anyone else need a picture? I see a couple more phones up. All right, apps. There are a lot of apps that will remind you that can be really annoying, and there's actually some that can be really fun. So first, Duolingo. This is a language one. So when I started to learn Japanese, you can go in there. You can say, I wanna learn this language. I wanna practice this many minutes per day. It can be as short as one minute. And it's like flashcards, so you just practice. And they've got quizzes, and they have a competitive method where you make friends, and then you see what their score is, and then you try to beat their score. And there's like a high score every week. It can be really fun to do it with a group of friends that way. That's Duolingo. Habitica is one that is on gamifying what you do. So it is about setting and getting achievements like you do in a video game. What is it you wanna do? And then you can get like badges and points for doing things. 
Google Keep. So this is another Google suite of tools. But what it does is it allows you to make like little note cards and sticky notes and things like that. So you can actually organize and make those lists, right? Because when in doubt, chart it out. Chart it out. So you can use Google Keep to do that. Tick Tick is another one. That's for reminders, so it sets reminders for you to say, oh, don't forget, you need to practice today, or you need to make sure to go out. My Fitness Pal is one for working out. If you want to get stronger or fitter or just be healthier, you can have your Fitness Pal to track you. The same with all those like little smart electronics, right? They exist if you can afford it. Then there's fun things like Inktober. Has anyone done Inktober? I haven't done Okay. Yeah, would you like to say something about it? Okay, I'll say it. <laughs> but thanks for participating. So Inktober is for the artists in the room. Do you like to draw? Yeah? If you want to practice drawing and you don't think you're good at it, this is all 30 days of October, one drawing a day. And everybody shares, and it's hashtags, and so you can see other things. And then by the end of it, you have, wait, you have 30 new sketches. You could draw the same thing every day if you want, but they actually have themes every day. So it's different things to make you think and to try new things. It's really fun. And the writing one is called NaNoWriMo. So that is writing a novel in a month. 50,000 words. That's the equivalent of at least 40 pages, if you space it correctly. You have to write 2,500 words per day to keep on schedule. Some people get it done in two days by like not eating and sleeping at all. Some people put it off and then write it all the last two days. But the healthy thing is, again, to try and do that 2,500 a day, which is about a page. And sometimes if you know you're going to be gone, try and write longer. But you have to challenge yourself to do the writing. Is there anything else, any other apps that you guys use that have helped you to try and get to your goals? Yeah. So that was Todoist, and that is a paid subscription, but it works really well. You said better than Google Keep, and, and actually the reminders, if it's daily, it'll automatically recycle. Yeah. Uh, okay. The basic is free if you want to try it. I see you over there. Okay, so Google Assistant, Siri, I use them to help to remind you through the system. Okay, there was one over here. Oh, actually, two. Okay, you and then you. Western Dailies Artist. Oh, Equestria Dailies. Art I was like Western Dailies. Equestria Dailies Artist Training Ground. Yes. So the, the training grounds gives you different prompts every day, and it's pony themed. And there's a huge community that shares and works together. Cool, thank you. And I use Khan Academy. Khan Academy? It's a free thing that teaches you how to remember the map that you might have forgotten. Oh. Reading, anything that you learned in school, it helps you get back up the pace on it. So that quizzes you on math and other things from school that you may not actually practice and it keeps you up to date. Yep. So you're trying not to forget things. Because a lot of times if you don't practice, you will forget. Like I cannot do like division in my head anymore. <laughs> yes? I know uh, one thing that spawned from the, the training grounds from Pleasure Daily, um, they actually have their own deviant art page um, where it goes all year round where you get a new prompt um, once a week. Mm -hmm. They even have like, a little counter and everything. All that stuff gets posted on the gallery. Okay, so that's DeviantArt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, more DeviantArt. They have communities that do that as well. 
Great. Anyone else? Okay. As I mentioned before, I actually got permission to use this from the artist, Iona, on DeviantArt. Um, absolutely fantastic, right? So what happened with Thorax? A, he was a really mean changeling and got to be super sweet, but B, he actually said in an episode that he was a bit overwhelmed about ruling a kingdom. Where did this come from? I can't, I can't do it, but you have to do it. And so sometimes there'll be a big change in your life and it's really difficult to adjust, but it can take that time and know that not everything is perfect. So effects are normal. If you need to step back, do that and then just keep going. And finally, before we get into questions, stay positive. <laughs> I love these guys. It's Pokemon, I know. But that's, as I said earlier, it's really important to stay positive and to think about how things can improve. Don't be negative, it's really not gonna help. Again, seek help if you need it. I can't means that you physically cannot do that thing. But when you say I won't, you are choosing not to. Keep those two words separate. Do you say, I can't? Can you actually physically not ever be able to do that thing? Or do you just choose that you won't because of an excuse? Too hard, too much money, too tired. It's not bad. A lot of people do that. But remember that a lot of times what you say is can't is actually won't. And you have to think, why am I saying that? What is it that's keeping me? And so when you start to question yourself, that's when you start to realize what's important to you. That's why it helps you to find your cutie mark. Failure is part of learning. There will be setbacks. You may not always get an A grade. Don't expect it, but it does happen. And always, always learn a lesson and write back to Princess Celestia. All right, we're gonna show another clip. You make it look so easy. Oh, darling, come now. You've conquered your shyness a thousand times over. You can't let a few fashion ponies undo all that progress. I guess not. You simply must access your inner strength and allow it to shine through. How? Uh, daily affirmations? Meditation? Ooh, power posing works wonders whenever I feel intimidated. Try these. Confident warrior. Gold medalist. Show pony. Yeah, so for every pony there, power posing is one of those things that we learn from Iron Will, right? Standing yeah. strong, looking strong, free, being brave. But she also said things like visualizations. See yourself there. Think about what it'll be like. There's actually a lot you can search online for all of those suggestions that Rarity made. And she really said, you know, you've conquered your shyness, Fluttershy. And you can't let fashion undo all of that because she was trying to sell to these really snooty fashion ponies. And then what did she do? She wore costumes, which gave her confidence to be able to get out there and do it. I actually did a panel about that before, so we're not going to go into it. Um, and we're actually going to do this really quickly, too. So this is what visualizations are like. Who saw the one about the play? Yeah. So Fluttershy was like, wait, you want me to play the starring role? And then what happened? Oops, sorry. There should be a video. Ah, uh, I may not have made the video. So what happened is um, Celestia told her, imagine yourself as me, proud, regal, raising the sun. And even through this picture here, you can see she started to think, okay, maybe I can do it. And Fluttershy also grew. This is what we were talking about earlier. So she took a plan. She had folks say, okay, you want a nature preserve? Let's build it. Well, what turned out to be a mess, it wasn't right. And why was that? They didn't listen to her. She knew what she wanted, but then some pony else tried to tell her what she wanted. That doesn't work. When you try to find your cutie mark, make what works for you. And that happened to every pony, right? We said Twilight's made the school. You keep growing. So for those of you that have cutie marks, remember, you can still get new cutie marks, you can still grow. So what do you want from you, cutie mark? What do you want to do? And my favorite, do or do not, there is no try. 
<laughs> Begun the Clone Wars have. I love that one. Yeah, don't give up. Okay, don't quit. Thank you. Don't quit. Come in. Okay. So now let's open it up. We got 15 minutes. Oh, what about you? <laughs> Any Steven Universe fans? Hell yeah. Okay. So we'll finish it off with questions from you. I have a microphone up here if you just want to kind of line up here if you have any questions. And if not, I'll keep going. I have more slides. Any questions? Can we see more slides? Yes. Yes. Uh. <laughs> the question was, can we see more slides? I love you guys. All right. So goal setting, again, there's bad types. So what's bad about a dreamer? I really want to be the next president because we need a new one. Not to get political, but we will have a better president. Is it going to be you? Is that a realistic goal? Have you gone to law school? <laughs> have you tried to run for Congress? OK, so some person that says that I want to be the president of the world. OK, and that's even bigger. When you set a goal, when you make a list, think about something small. Don't be the person that says that they can do everything, because oftentimes the fault in that goal is that it's too big and you don't know how to get there. Number two, guess what? <laughs> you thought you had a list. Look at my <laughs> list. Has anyone ever met someone like that? Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. One, one day you've got this amazing costume, the next day they buy one just like it, but you made yours. But theirs is better. Well, is it? Everybody has a different opinion of what's better. Maybe for them, buying that amazing, super expensive costume was worth it. Maybe for you, it was the joy of making. That's what I do with my costumes. I love making. It's not about how good it is. Okay, I like it to look good. But let me, let me go over here again. I made these. All right, they have lasted a long time. Woo. These hooves, they last. How did I make my hooves so strong? But guess what, the first time I wore them to a convention, they were almost falling apart by the end. You have to learn. I learned that putting a cast on your foot to make a hoop is strong, but it still crumbles. But putting resin on top makes it stronger. And I went online and I searched YouTube and I said, how do you make these hard things harder? And they said, if you want to make a really good prop, try resin. And it is difficult to work with. <laughs> Find supervision if you need it. But make sure that when you do things, again, you may fail, you may have setbacks, but keep making it better. Don't worry about someone else's goal. Don't worry about someone else saying they're better than you. Do what's fun. Okay, so the slacker, you know what? I'm going to breathe. All right, I win. <laughs> Don't set small goals that you know you'll get to. Set a goal that'll be hard or maybe challenging. Small goals sometimes are very important. If you are in a very, very dark place and getting out of bed is the only thing that you can do, then do it. And on a better day, maybe you set another goal, going outside, going for a walk. Do what works for you. Another bad goal setter, the generalist. You know, I think I'll go to a convention. Okay, which one? Oh, you know, that convention. When? Is it gonna be in the summer, when you have off from school? Well, I thought about going on vacation, you see where I'm going? Pick a convention you want to go to. Pick a date, pick a time. How much money does it cost? Well, how are you going to get there? Are you going with friends? Are you going to wear a costume? There's so many little pieces. And that leads to the tactician, which is good sometimes. But sometimes it's a little too much. And of course, our favorite, Judgy McJudgerson. <laughs> Seriously? Why are you still looking for this cutie mark? What's wrong with you? Don't you just know? I've already got mine. Who was that? Diamond Tiara, right? And she was the one using that derogatory term. 
saying blank flanks, and it hurt people because she judged that she was better than them. And that's something that you shouldn't do. If people judge you, brush it off. It's not about them, it's about you. And if you do what you love, don't let other people hurt you with their words. Because a lot of times they don't know what you're going through. You don't know what they're going through. Diamond Tierra had a tough life at home. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes it's good, again, to talk to somebody, you know, talk to a counselor or someone if it really gets tough. But always realize that it's usually not actually your fault unless you know you made a mistake. And then learn from it and grow. Because, again, you never stop learning. So the horn tutor, I was going to do this. I did it. Yeah, yummy. I got all my achievements. The sideline sitter, uh -huh, you know, do your thing. I'll just, you know, sit alongside. Or maybe they just post online like trolls and say, huh, I see you posting those achievements. They can be mean. Don't listen to them. We've got five more minutes, so we'll go through the listaholic. Do we know someone that's a listaholic? <laughs> when in doubt, chart it out. Triple check the checklist to make sure we didn't miss anything when we double check the checklist. But yes, triple checking the checklist to make sure you haven't double checked the checklist twice. Wait, yeah. She is on the extreme edge. So it works for Twilight, but don't think that it necessarily will work for you. Okay, there's always going to be good lists, but you don't need a lot. Again, break it down into small pieces. Daily lists are good. One thing for me that I do, I don't do a daily list, but I do a weekly list. What are my top priorities? So I have discovered what motivates me is moving forward and getting away from the past and doing things so that I can progress and help to motivate others. Literally, the bottom one on my list was BronyCon. So I'm going to check that one off after this panel. Thank you, everyone. Woo! And then I have my next convention. I'm going to FAU, which is a furry convention, in a few weeks. So that'll be really fun. I'm also going to Otakon, but not doing a panel. But I'll still see anyone there at Otakon if you are going as well. Just let me know. You've got my at Riftwing designs. Again, one more little plug. Um, and I also have stickers here. So you can get your Attack the Day or No Means No sticker if you want after we're done, which will be just in a few minutes. But yeah, this is one of my weekly lists. What do I want to get done this week? And then I try to make smaller tasks if I can. But be flexible. Some weeks I am copying that same exact list over again. But I have made it a priority to always make that weekly list. And yes, I use paper. Sorry, digital guys. <laughs> we old school. <laughs> Whatever works for you. I think we'll skip through mental goal visualization. You can look at that if you want. Um, but really what it is is imagine what it's like to get to your goal. Sometimes make a, an idea board you can search online. So that is literally just making that picture that Fluttershy had of what she wanted the retreat to be. Every time you see a scrap, a photo, an online picture, you can make a digital collage of the things that make you happy. What is your cutie mark going to be? Well, maybe you see a picture that makes you smile. Start using that. Maybe there's like a little idea, like you see that there is um, a trident. And you're like, wow, this is really cool. I kind of like that. Maybe it ends up being part of your cutie mark, that physical representation of yourself. But maybe then you realize that, oh, if I'm going through some of these online places with pictures and ideas, that it's something else. So keep building. I went through the panel. So it took a while to make a panel, but you need to make good goals. Another one is that goals are a part of a larger thing. So this quote says, goals can be thought of as plants that need a specific environment to grow in. Sometimes that we need to remind ourselves that you need to be fertilized for it to grow. And that involves making changes. Can you make a field that has been planted with seeds grow overnight? So why do you think sometimes you can get that deadline done at the last minute? You have to plan out when you are growing a farm. When the apple family needs to get that orchard, how long does it take for an apple tree to grow? Years, decades, generations. So if you want a good fruit tree, you plant it, thinking about that tree in a few years beginning to make fruit, which is back to the very beginning 
Start with the end in mind. Visualize the teacup. <laughs> what color teacup do you want? Is it big? Is it small? Use that teacup. Teacup. Think about that as you make your cutie marks. And eventually you'll be able to make a lot of things, even if it's one little thing at a time. And I think with that, I, yes. So my friend, my friend Flippy, who isn't with us today, he has at a wedding too. He made this slide, which is go online and search the psychology of goal setting. You will be fascinated. Your brain does really weird things to trick you into thinking, oh yeah, yeah, I can do it later, and that you need motivation, and sometimes it's little bits of motivation that work, and sometimes you just really wanna to get to that big, it's over motivation. And that literally releases chemicals in your brain to make you feel happy. And there's different chemicals that make you feel happy, whether it's a long goal or a short goal. How many of you feel happy when you get a like? Probably most of you, because guess what? When you see that someone has liked or commented on something you put online, it releases the same feel-good chemicals in your brain. It's creepy. So search online if you want to learn more about that. And finally, the major do's and don'ts in terms of goal setting. It can scare you. Make it big enough so that you have to grow. You have to try something new. Again, back to Zootopia, try everything. Try something that is going to be surprised when you finish. Make something bigger. Go somewhere you haven't been. Try something new. And if you're not afraid, it might make you nervous, but it'll always help you. And you know, maybe there is a wrong goal. Maybe you decide that's not working, but you learned that it didn't work and you can try something else. Try something, raise the bar is a common phrase, and grow. And always, again, seek help from coaches, friends, family. If you're religious, the heads of your religion, your parents would love to hear from you, your grandparents would love to hear from you, your siblings. I can't say that for everyone, but for most of you, if you have someone, whether it is your family, your friends, or just asking for help from someone professional, Sometimes it's worth it, and there's nothing, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Get help sometimes because everybody needs help. Everybody can be scared. Everybody has difficult times, but you are not alone. And again, you are worth it. So while I can't guarantee that this has helped you to find your cutie mark, I hope that it has helped you to learn methods to learn to discover and achieve your dreams. Thank you, every pony. Now come on up and get some free stickers. <laughs>